Squares are different some cubes, some cubes, quadratic, quadratic form. None of those are uh, available for us. We need somewhere to start. If you could just give me one zero, I could factor out that factor that that zero is associated with, and then get a quadratic, right? Because when we divide out one factor, a factor of first degree, the next the next polynomial that we get will be one degree less than the one we started with. Okay, we get a quadratic, we can factor quadratics all day long, as long as they're factorable, and, and we, we can move on with our lives, right? But we don't have a starting point, so how are we going to give ourselves a starting point? Or we, what would you do if you had no other choice? Just get started. Put a zero in for x as a guess? Just give me a guess. Okay, let's see what will happen. We put in a zero for x, zero, zero, zero. What do we wind up with? 56. Well, we wanted a zero, so that didn't work. Okay, not a bad idea. Uh, what else could we try? Negative 56. Negative 56, try negative 56. Try that out. Okay, put in negative 56, you can do it yourself. Try that out. Uh, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Right? If that doesn't work, then what can we do? One. Try one. Try Four. negative one. Try two. Four. Try negative two. Right? We just start throwing numbers in for x willy nilly. Right? Piggledy piggledy. We just start guessing. How many guesses could we make? A lot. A lot is an understatement. We could guess a lot of guesses. Okay? So, how long is our list of guesses, let's say? Forever. Forever. Okay? If one doesn't work, then negative one might work. If that doesn't work, two might work. If it doesn't work, negative two might work. Three might work. Negative three might work. We just keep working our way to the positives and the negatives. Maybe that's our approach. Maybe we'll work through the positives and then the negatives. But we just kind of have to guess. Right? But the list of guesses is infinite. And you know what? Some of them, maybe some of them, aren't even good guesses. Okay? You see what I'm telling you? Maybe some of those guesses aren't even good guesses. So, what we're learning about today is how to get started and how to make a list of guesses that's shorter than infinity. Okay, does that sound good? A list of guesses that's shorter than infinity. Yeah. So let me help you find that list. Okay. Uh, first, we're going to list the factors of the constant. What's the constant? 56. 56. We're going to list the, the factors of 56. What are the factors of 56? 1, 2, 4, 7, 8, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 14, 28, 56. Okay, 1 times 56, that works. 2 times 28 works. 4 times 14, 7 times 8. Those are all possibilities. Okay. You notice what else I put on there? Plus or minus. Is that valid? Yeah. Why is that valid? Why, why would I include negative 4? Negative 4 times negative 14 will also be positive 56, so we have to include that as a possibility. Okay. Now, I won't overcomplicate this. I will say for this problem, and I'll tell you why, why it is for this problem, because there's a 1 in front of x cubed. Okay. For this problem, if there's a 1 in front of x cubed, that's it. That's the list of guesses. Okay. Guesses for rational zeros. This is the complete list of all the possible rational zeros. Now, don't, don't get confused. That's not the only kinds of zeros. There are conceivably uh, imaginary zeros. There could be irrational zeros, like maybe the square root of 2 or the square root of 7. Okay. But if, if there is a rational number that works as a zero, it's on this list. 
So our list of guesses just got a lot shorter than infinity. How are we going to quickly make these guesses? You just plug them in, but that kind of takes a while. Can we learn like a fast way to? The synthetic substitution. One, five, two, fifty-six. Okay. And we just start. We just might as well start with positive one and see where that takes us. How will we know if one is a zero? We get down the remainder is zero. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we have the one, we have one, we have four, negative four, negative twenty-six. That 56 minus 26 does not make zero, so we'll just undo all that. <laughs> so positive one is out. Okay. Now I'll try negative one. One times, so negative one times one. Wait, so you're saying we have to do like every single one like this? Until we find one that works. Yeah. Okay. So negative six. I don't, I'm just not do sure what you expect, I and mean, sometimes things just got to happen, right? Okay. Well, negative 1 times negative 6, 6, negative 22 plus 6 is negative uh, 16, and that's not going to work. That's not going to give us a 0. Positive 1's out, negative 1's out, try 2. Two times one is two. Three, six, uh, negative twenty-eight, and two times negative twenty-eight is negative fifty-six. Now that we found that zero of two, why don't you guys go ahead and find the other zeros, just to add, add more practice. We've done that work together so far. Find the other, how many zeros are there left? Two. two. You got a degree three, you should have three zeros if have one of them, so there should be two left. Okay, so at the same time, at the same time that we tested two, same time that we tested 2 and found that it was a 0, we also confirmed that because we know 2 is 0, that what is a factor? If 2 is a 0, what's a factor? If 2 is a 0, what's a factor? Factor like this. Oh. X minus 2 is a factor. Well, because if I put 2 in here, that'll cause this factor to be 0. And if I multiply this factor by the rest of it, it'll be 0. So we're trying to figure out what makes this equal to 0. It would be the same as saying what makes this equal to 0. We just factor out an x minus 2. x minus 2 times this gives us that original polynomial. So to find the other zeros, we could, as, as some of you did, just make more brackets and keep trying all of the guesses, right? Try two, well, we did two, try, well, you know what? Two could be in, like, there again. It could be all twos, okay? Mm -hmm. Two could be a zero multiple times. Uh, or if it's not the negative two or negative four, we just keep on going and make all the guesses until we run out of guesses. Or, instead of that, we can look at it similarly to the other finding zero problems that we've had before. So what would be the next thing we do from here? Factor this x squared minus 3x minus 28. Okay. x minus 7, x plus 4, and x minus 2. Okay. In, order to, in order to multiply three things together, you get zero. And this has to be zero. 
and this has to be 0, or this has to be 0. So x would be 7, or negative 4, or the 2 that we already found. But those are our two here, 7, negative 4. Try another one. Other questions before any questions before you would try and do another one like this. Okay. Ready for me to just give you one and try again? those possible zeros. It's called the rational zero test. We're finding all the possible rational zeros by taking the factors of the constant. Now if the number in front of the, the leading coefficient, the number in front of the x with the biggest power, uh, if it were something other than 1, there's a little bit extra to do and I'll show you what that is later. But we'll work on this one for now. Okay, so if we, if we start this problem out like the previous one, then we'll make our list of zeros. We'll make guesses. We're lucky because one is work. So if we if we just start at one, then we got to this one pretty quickly. Okay. So what we wind up with is x cubed plus three x squared minus six x minus eight. Okay. Which is a third degree, just like this was a third degree. And what did we have to do? We had to do sort of that whole process. So since this isn't easily factorable. It's factorable, but it's not easy. We just approach it in the same way. We'll make another list of zeros based off the factors of the constant. Do synthetic again. Okay? And each, each step along the way, you went from a degree 4 to a degree 3. Then we'll go from a degree 3 to a degree 2. And we'll take it back to a degree 2. Negative one from this one, x plus 
plus 4 equals 0, negative 4 is 0, and x equals 2. So all of these, these are our four zeros. Oh, it's because Well, you don't have to add it in there. What I'm trying to show throughout the whole process is that we're just factoring out the first factor of x minus 1, we're factoring out the next factor of x plus 1, we're left with this, like this whole thing multiplied together gives you the original polynomial. I don't want you to decide that. If we didn't do that, we still find the same zeros, would we? We should still find the same zeros, okay? But we should include all four that we found. We found one to start with and the negative one. Make sure you don't leave that out of your final answer. Um, so fourth degree, four zeros. Fifth degree, five zeros. Sixth degree, six zeros, okay? Now, there's a couple of uh, conditions there, okay? Now, the zeros aren't necessarily all going to be different from each other. For instance, we could have a polynomial that has one as a zero and one as a zero again. Like two factors of x minus one, x minus one times x minus one times something else. Um, and also, some of our zeros could be imaginary. Some of them could be imaginary. And if there are imaginary zeros, there are going to be two of them at least, or four, or six of them come in even numbers. And, well, we're not going to be guessing imaginary numbers, are we? Doesn't make a lot of sense. We're not going to be guessing imaginary numbers. So we're not going to find imaginary numbers from this part of the process. When we find imaginary zeros, it'll be because we come down to the quadratic, and then we use the quadratic formula. Because if we have the imaginary zeros, it means that the, this was not factorable. We could not have factored this. Uh, we needed to use the quadratic formula, and we found imaginary zeros. Okay. All right, so let's put something that's not a 1 as a leading coefficient, 2 or 3 or something else, and see what uh, is in store there. Um, we had 1, 7, here we go. So we'll make a list of factors of the constant. Remember that we need to include positive and negative. 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4, 6 times 2, and uh, 12 times 1. Okay. So all of these are possible. These could all be possible. Okay. But I'll just continue the list of what I know uh, is also possible. You can also have 1 over 3, or 2 over 3, or 3 over 3, or 4 over 3, or 6 over 3, or 12 over 3. Why is it over 3? What do you think? I was talking about that leading coefficient before. That's why. What is that leading coefficient? Do we have to have them? You got to list them. If I ask you for the list, you got to list them. Uh, and they may be the zeros that you need. why this list is the way that it is, okay? All ready for that? Can I have your attention? So let me try and show you why these are also possible zeros. And in fact, any factor of the constant over any factor of the leading coefficient will be on this list, okay? So if, if the leading coefficient was 6, we would have to do over, these are all over 1, 
then you're going to have to do over 2, over 3, and over 6. Okay? Let me show you why. Okay, let me show you why. Now think about when we come down and we, we figure out that uh, something was a 0. Okay? It was because we took one of the factors and set it equal to 0, right? Are we all understanding that? Okay. So we took a factor, we set it equal to 0. Okay. Well, let's think about that, like the step before. Yeah. Well, that came from a factor, you know, this factor was multiplied by something else, right? Well, yeah. if you could really, if you could put your eyes to a screen of some kind rather than looking at your papers, you should be able to do this problem. Okay? You should be able to find the zeros, and I will give you time to do that, but if you will please pay attention to what I'm saying, I would really appreciate it, okay? So, whatever this factor is, when we multiply it by this other factor, what should we wind up getting? We should get that. Yeah, when we multiply it together, we should get that. Okay. Now, I don't know a lot about these factors, but I do know a couple of things. Okay, a couple of things. Okay. Whatever we have right here is going to multiply by whatever we have right here. Okay. Those biggest powers of x that are in your factors. When you multiply this times that, what should we get? We should get 3x cubed. Right? So whatever we have here and there, the number should be, the numbers that we have here should be factors of 3. Right? Factors of 3. So that's a possibility, a factor of 3. Okay? So this should be a factor of 3. And then this number is going to get multiplied by this number. Okay? And what is this number times that number going to be equal to? Negative 12. Negative 12. So whatever this number is needs to be some factor of negative 12. So when we go to solve this, we will subtract this factor of negative 12, right? And we'll have a factor of 3 times x equals some factor of 12, or of negative 12. And then we'll divide by that factor of 3 on both sides. And we'll find that that 0 is going to be some form of a factor of negative 12, the constant, over a factor of 3, the leading coefficient. Can you repeat that last step that you This one right here? Yeah. So we would set this at equal to 0. We would subtract the factor of negative 12, whatever it was. Would it be 4 or negative, five, or negative 3 or whatever it is? Right? And then we would divide by what's ever in front of x. And we've already established whatever is in front of x, but if we multiply by x, it has to be a factor of 3. Okay. So we divide by that factor of 3. Divide by factor of 3, factor of 3. So any 0, any rational 0 at least that we wind up with, will be a factor of negative 12 over a factor of 3. Okay. All I'm trying to do is help you understand why the list of zeros will be a factor of a leading coefficient, or sorry, the constant of a factor of a leading coefficient. Okay? Yeah, please put your best desks back to the table, show you where the front desk is.